So I'm here with Vivek Kondra, who's in Australia, um, touring around and talking to a lot of people. And I just thought I'd take the opportunity to ask him a couple of questions for all the Gov2 community peeps out there around Australia. So, hi, welcome to oh, Australia. Thanks for chatting with me, appreciate it. <laughs> no, that's cool. Um, can you um, just give us a bit of an overview about your ideas about uh, driving tech innovation in government? What do you see to be the, the core um, things that you need to do to do that? Well, I think obviously it always starts with the people. Um, and so one of the most important things that needs to happen in government around the world is that uh, you need to be able to hire the right people who are going to drive innovation and be change agents. You can't legislate and you can't uh, uh, essentially mandate innovation itself. So it starts with that. Secondly, I think you actually need bold leadership. Um, if you look at what President Obama did, uh, he made technology a central part of how his administration was going to achieve some of the policy objectives that he had set out. And then third, you need to be able to disrupt the status quo by making sure that you have a culture that uh, celebrates failure. It doesn't actually go out there and punish those that are on the leading edge. And I mean, if you've got that leadership at the top level and you've got your, because you will always have enthusiastic geeks sort of at the grassroots level, how do you, I guess, drive that change in that rather large middle level? I actually think it's easier if you have uh, the number of people on the front lines, right. uh, the geeks who are kind of banding together, who are trying to find a new way. Mm -hmm. uh, what you've got to be able to make sure is that uh, at the middle management level, unfortunately, a lot of times you end up with people or incentivized by the number of dollars they manage or the number of years they've been in the job. Yep. And uh, that's where, from a political leadership perspective, it's very, very important to make sure that you're reaching out and um, embracing those people that are on the front lines, that understand the issues, that understand the innovation that needs to be driven, and frankly, reward those managers that are going to support, encourage, um, and embrace uh, that, that, that notion and that culture and those people on the front lines. Okay. And at the same time, the reality is that we don't talk about this often, but you also have to be able to make the hard choices. If there are managers or people uh, that are getting in the way, that are constantly the doctor knows, mm -hmm. they're basically in dereliction of their duty. Yeah. What I mean by that is that's not what the people of a country uh, expect from their government. Mm -hmm. And so they're basically advancing their own personal interests over the interests of their people. Okay. Um, and finally, because we don't have a lot of time, um, what are your observations and thoughts about um, what's happening in Australia and some of the opportunities and challenges for Australia? I mean, you know that you're sort of here and seeing what's going on. Well, I'm actually very excited. And I think it's uh, an amazing country with uh, an entrepreneurial culture. So the number of meetings I've had, I've had the honor to meet people like you um, who are doing some amazing work in the public sector, whether it's public participation or fundamentally rethinking what a modern democracy looks like. Uh, I've also seen some of the really, really bold steps that are being taken to invest in strategic infrastructure. Uh, so the National Broadband Network is one example. Uh, you look at uh, what uh, what's happening as far as the government is concerned. You're seeing some of these technologies come into the government, but uh, the fear I have is that uh, you want to make sure that you continue on that trajectory because it's very easy for those people in the government that want to preserve the status quo uh, to win out. And I think there is an epic battle going on between the past and the future. And it's really, really important that from a public policy perspective, that they're the appropriate incentives for those that are architect of the future mm -hmm. to be the ones who are driving the country. And do you think that epic battle also represents a bit of a power shift from sort of, you know, um, a small number of people to the public and, and how the public can sort of engage? In oh, absolutely. I mean, it's clear. We see it every day, whether it's in Australia mm -hmm. or anywhere else in the world, that the shift in power from a few government officials behind closed doors, the masses, it's real. Yeah. And technologies that didn't exist before exist today that have made this possible uh, in terms of the very structures that are needed. So the ability for anyone with a front row seat to their government with a mobile device, that's amazing. We don't think about it, we just take it for granted. But now every citizen um, can be a co-creator. Every citizen can be a watchdog and hold their government accountable. And every citizen can actually go out there and uh, be part of that digital public square 
And that that is what I think is uh, what's super exciting about the times that we live in. Yeah, for sure. Well, look, thank you Great. very much. Thank Lovely you. To meet Appreciate you. it. And um, I look forward to next time you come. So thank Sounds you. Sounds good.